Hey guys, in the previous video we have installed React.js to our system for the first time and in this video we are going to talk about its syntax which is the JSX. So let's begin. So React has a special syntax called JSX which stands for JavaScript XML. It is actually a syntax extension to JavaScript which helps us to create or to produce React elements in a much easier way. This example is a good representation of the JSX code, which really looks like we are passing an HTML tag to a JavaScript variable. But this is actually JSX, it is not HTML. And to understand it better, let's look at the syntax much closer. So here in the example, there are two different screenshots. The upper left example is the ordinary React code for creating a new element as an H1 tag which has an attribute as a CSS class called class name inside an object because basically we can pass multiple attributes so that's why it is written as an object and inside the tag there is the hello world text and the second screenshot is exactly the same react element but it has written as JSX as we can see it has a much cleaner and easier definition so that's why we prefer to use JSX rather than ordinary JavaScript code because maybe for this example it doesn't look so difficult but later if we need more nested elements with a lot of different attributes or maybe text then creating them will be much more difficult and complicated to read so that's why while developing React applications using JSX is always the best case. Now before we go back to our project, there is one last thing I would like to mention on this code, which is that on the h1 tag you see an attribute called class name. This is a CSS class, but it is not defined as class, rather it is defined as class name. So why is that? Now as you know from JavaScript, there is already a keyword called class for creating JavaScript classes, and since this is JSX, it is not actually HTML, we can't use the class keyword for defining CSS classes because they are actually JavaScript classes and that's why there is a little change for, for JSX. If you are going to define CSS classes, we have to use the class name instead of the class keyword. Okay, now let's go back to our project and start writing our first React code. Alright, so we are back on our project and here you see a couple of folders. Now let me quickly explain what they all are therefore we are not going to use all of them in this tutorial. First of all, the node modules are all of the dependencies that are inside this project and we are not going to do something here. The package lock JSON and the package JSON are both for the dependencies which are coming with uh, the node modules. Now here under package lock and package JSON we see some meta information like the name of our project, the version, the dependencies and some configurations like the Babel configuration for example which we need for translating the JSX because browsers don't understand JSX code and that's why we need Babel for make this uh, translation. And when we look to the package.json file here we also see some dependencies about React testing, React and React DOM. Now these two guys here, React and React DOM, shows that this project is compatible with React.js. Secondly, we see here the current version of React, which is about 17. If you are using an older version of React, like version 14 or so, then some of the newer features came later to React, like for example React Hooks, which we are going to cover later in this tutorial, are not going to work. So if you have an older version of React, then you need to update it by using npm. Okay, now let's run our project again with npm start. Okay, now it is running here. Now I would like to open the Firefox developer tools and I would like to show you here something. Now when we open the developer tools, we see that the complete app is running under a single div with an ID of root. So let's find it now. So this is the main HTML which is under the public file. And once we click on this index HTML, we see that our div which has the root ID. So the whole application is running under this div. You see that in the body section there is actually nothing more. But here we see under this div, 
there is actually something else. So where is the rest? Now when I open the source folder, which is going to be used for our whole development, we see that here a couple of JavaScript and CSS files, but not any HTML. This is the only HTML file we need and the whole application is going to run under this root. So actually more HTML files are not necessary because we have JSX, which is going to do the same thing. Now here also is an index.js file. Now what we see here is that first of all, there are two main packages, React and React DOM that we have recently seen on inside the package.json. They are imported here to tell that this application is a React application. The React DOM package has a render function. Now this function has two variables. The first one is the app itself that is going to be run. And the second one is where it is going to be placed. So what the React DOM does, it takes this whole application and runs it under this div. So this is basically how React runs under the hood and it is important for you to understand before we start coding. And finally, you may ask what this strict mode means. This is basically an extra double check that React does. So if something is wrong with the application, then we are going to see warnings thrown out. Okay, now let's go inside this app component and see what is there. So this app component is actually this file here. This is our app component. By the way, you may ask what this report web vitals means. This is something with performance, which we don't need for this uh, tutorial. So I'm going to delete it. And also we don't need this import anymore. Now let's go back to our app component. Here, what we see that is actually a function a JavaScript function returning some JSX code, which is everything what we see under this header. Okay. So as we see, they are all written here. Now let me delete all of these. And now everything is a white page, but the app is actually still there. Now what I need to do here is just for an example purpose to return here our first JSX code. Okay. So I'm going to define here a div and type here my first JSX code. Save it. By the way, we received a warning here. It says logo is defined but never used because I forgot to delete it from here. I need to delete it. Okay, now the warning is gone. Now let's see what happened. Okay, as we can see, our first JSX code is here. Before closing, I would like to give two more important information about JSX. The first one is that you always have to close your tags. If you leave them open, it's not going to work. You are going to receive an error. And the second one is you cannot return more than a single element. So for example, if I try to return a P tag, it's not going to work. But here also it tells the error. It says that the JSX elements must always be wrapped inside a single and an enclosing tag. And to do that, we just need to wrap our element with another tag. So if I try this again, this time we see that it works. If you don't want to see unnecessary div tags here, you can also leave them empty like this and this will still be okay. And when we go back here, now it has disappeared. So if you don't want to use unnecessary tags, then you can just basically leave them empty. This also works in React. Okay, so I think that's enough information for this video. In the following one, we are going to start talking about React components and create our first React component. Thank you guys for watching and see you in the next video.